The last thing we need in Australia is independence because all they'll provide is chaos and instability. In essence, it is one word, selfish. They are fake independents and they're deceiving voters. Well, of course they are. Of course they are. On the 21st of May, in electorates across the country, voters ignored the naysayers and took a leap of faith. Australian women want and demand better from the government. Please welcome the woman Anthony Green says is the next member for Goldstein. Political giants were slayed by community campaigns on behalf of underestimated women. Hi, hello, how are you? Kia, our climate has changed. We do know we will no longer be taken for granted. There are new faces on the federal political landscape. Australia has entered a new paradigm. To get two voices in the Senate, to be heard even louder and prouder, why wouldn't you want to do it? And we want to do it. These women have left in their wake a clutch of powerful people scratching their heads with the realisation that they are yesterday's men. In what looks to have been my last press conference as Treasurer. You're a bloody good Captain John! <laughs> Nobody's going to pretend that you're not shattered in events like this. It doesn't look good, uh, that'd be fair to say. So, yep, been cleaning up the office and uh, the unit and uh, a new future awaits, I suspect. A new dawn has broken over Parliament and the nation, with a record number of women independents entering federal politics and the largest crossbench since the Second World War. But what comes next? Tonight on Four Corners, a different kind of politics. We take an intimate, behind-the-scenes look at the people who defy the odds to win seats that were once taken for granted. Can they live up to the promise that Australian voters clearly thought they showed? Sometimes eras end in brutally mundane ways. For the career of former Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, it's the sight and sound of his image being scraped off what was, until very recently, his electorate office window. Mr Frydenberg's political vanquisher is Dr Monique Ryan, a so-called teal independent. Ryan gets the keys to Camp Frydenberg after being formally declared as the member for Kuyong. Is there a letter from Josh? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I don't think we've been left. Uh, no, well, there's nothing there. Yeah. It's a surreal moment for Ryan, who is the former head of neurology at Melbourne's Royal Children's Hospital. She has a fairly wicked sense of humour. Can I... You can fit in there. <laughs> Presumably. There's a mirror. That'll be handy. No letter. No. We will need to make this our space. I wanted to have a... A welcome party and a smoking ceremony. We need to work on a feng, feng shui. shui. Yeah. Um, exorcism. Was that exorcism? The well, I might, might get Father Dares from up the road and <laughs> throw with some holy water. <laughs> While Josh Frydenberg held Kuyong for 12 years, 
Monique Ryan has had zero political experience. She's having to get used to the barrage of sometimes surprising criticism that MPs face. Look, I think when you stand for, uh, for politics, people feel very free to make comments about all aspects of your personal appearance. Uh, at one point, there was a suggestion that my hair could be an issue from an uh, um, electability point of view. That your hair was unelectable. That's possibly what was said, yes. <laughs> The problem is my hair comes with me and uh, I don't take it off at night. Essentially, it's like going for a job interview in front of 115,000 people. And they either decide that they take you or they don't take you. And that can be bruising. Um, I put my hand up for that, I have to accept it, I guess. Mm. But you know, apparently my hair is electable, so... Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> It's a crisp five degrees in the nation's capital when two Teals jump in a taxi for their first visit to Parliament House as elected MPs. So we're just in a cab on our way to the rep store now. The newly elected member for Goldstein, Zoe Daniel, has only ever been to Parliament in an entirely different capacity, as an ABC reporter. Monique Ryan has only ever visited as a tourist. At this stage, the women still exude a sense of heady optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's home for the oh next three goodness. years, Mom. Oh, that, that building looks vaguely familiar. <laughs> the oh, lawn. Dear. I just want to roll down. I know, I've got, I've got visions of rolling down that road. I'm sure that's not allowed. Here we are, Mom. Under the rainbow. Oh! <laughs> oh lovely. It's a new day. <laughs> Where's the pot of gold? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think Josh took it with him, more likely than not, unfortunately, I should say that. Right. Zali Steggall's been here for three years, since she also scored an upset, unseating former Prime Minister Tony Abbott in the Sydney electorate of Warringah. <laughs> So you've got members, a member's bathroom, a <laughs> little kitchenette, and then there's more bathrooms in the hallway for staff and everything. Um, uh, reception, entry, and then we have four conversations. And this is where lots of stress. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few late nights. We didn't have too many. In the a bit of stress and a bit of late things. nights. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, so guys. Anyway, run. there you go. We'll, 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 we'll pop we'll back by and see. Yeah, because we we'll just we'll go back. Okay. You're welcome to. Yeah. Zoe Daniel rushes off to a meeting and leaves Zali Stegel and Monique Ryan to compare notes. Ryan admits her knowledge of what awaits her at Parliament is still rather patchy. So when we had that parliamentary sort of briefing last week, for some reason I had in my mind that you were in Canberra for 80 nights a year. No. And then they said something about being here for as much as half the year, and I was like, uh... Because I thought it was... Someone had told me it was 80, but obviously that's sitting nice. It's, it's standard calendar's about 20 to 22 weeks, sitting weeks. Oh. You sign up for this thing. Yeah. Seems like a great idea, but then you sort of realise you're going to be away from, you know, your family so much. Is, yeah. Does that sort of yeah, no, concern you? It is a bit concerning, absolutely. And that's part of the uncertainty of it as all. But I thought someone needs to do it and we need to have a reasonable alternative. We need to have someone who's a credible alternative to Josh Frydenberg. And there were so many reasons that people were disaffected and just disappointed in the government at that point. <laughs> Back in Melbourne, Monique Ryan's electorate of Kuyong 
is one of the country's most privileged. Household income is 30% higher than the national average. There was the eastern parts of the electorate that were potentially going to be the, the challenge. It was Baldwin, Baldwin North. That's danger country. Canterbury, the Badlands. <laughs> Why the Badlands? Well, not Badlands, but you know, we, we sort of thought that they were potentially more conservative and more strictly liberal parts of the electorate. Mm -hmm. Today, Ryan is working on social media strategy with her campaign manager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, um, so I tweeted my hockey game last night. Did you I say that? that? Yeah. So I tweeted is the she fact. doing this on taxpayers' money? I know. It's like it's eight o'clock on a Thursday night, a Wednesday night, and here I am playing hockey with you know my constituents. She had to stop the hockey during the campaign because we couldn't have it's her a very on high risk of disfiguring facial, or, um, disfiguring facial. Black influence. eyes would have been. Which I often get black eyes. <laughs> Are you a bit of a rough player? I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Competitive? <laughs> Holds her ground? Look, any woman who plays hockey over, uh, in over 45s um, is a competitive person. Um, Monique Ryan is also anticipating it could be elbows out amongst the teals. One of the hallmarks of the teals is that everyone seems very nice, but is there competition? Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think it's true to say that we're all alpha females. Um, Where are the fault lines? We all have to we all have to have a presence in Canberra and we all have to demonstrate to our community that we're delivering on the things that we've been elected to deliver. Uh, in many ways, our priorities overlap. So we will each be struggling to demonstrate our impact individually. And to a certain extent, it'll, it'll work better if we do work together. But there will be tensions, I'm sure, in some ways, just in terms of... Yeah. Also, we don't... We don't you know, we're not, this, we're not, you know, because we're all independents, I actually don't know the others. A, I don't know them, but B, I don't really understand where they're coming from politically. You know, some of them are people who come from a traditional liberal background. Some of us have been Labor for a short or a long, <laughs> a long period of time. Labor Party members. Yeah. So you're quite culturally different to them? Well, I think we're all a bit different from each other. But we're all alphas. Later that night, Ryan makes her way to a thank you function for her big donors. It got to the point where I thought, gee, I, I better win, you know. It wasn't just people's donations, it was also the, sort of the weight of expectation and, and I knew how strongly people felt about the need for change. You know, I felt that need as well. The function is held at an imposing Italianate mansion. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. You're in the right place. I think I am. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for doing yeah, this. Before. I thought I'd play that. Congratulations, you. Thank you so much. This party's being thrown by a wealthy philanthropist. These are the sort of people the Liberal Party once took for granted. It was simply the need for change. Uh, I went and saw our uh, former member five years ago to represent to him what this electorate was saying. Uh, even in those days, 75% of this electorate cared about climate change and he made it very clear that that was not the priority of the Liberal Party. 3,000 people donated a war chest to Monique Ryan's campaign of $1.1 million, from pensioners at $5 a month to a single donor who gave $115,000. Peter Garnick was crowned the campaign's wallet whisperer. Well, people were donating every fortnight, every month, and we would go back to people a, week, a month later 
and people would say, yes, I'm willing to help again. The intensity, the sense of urgency was just nothing I'd ever experienced before. And what do you think was the single most motivating factor behind that sense of urgency and intensity? Hope. Hope. Cabramatta in Sydney's southwestern suburbs is a completely different world to the mansions of Kuyong. The average family's income here is less than half of those of families in Monique Ryan's electorate. It's here that independent Dai Lee galvanised another community, staging an upset against high-profile frontbencher Christina Keneally to win what was in this case a safe Labor seat, Fowler. Fowler was the only Labor seat taken by an independent. I've been all day on the road, oh, yeah, all yeah, day. Yeah. New office and everything. New office and everything, so I'm just like... What's nice? Tonight, at a charity function in a Cabramatta reception centre, Di Lee works the room like a celebrity. <laughs> uh, hello, sorry, I just saw... <laughs> hello, <MP. laughs> Hello, how are you? Hey, how are celebrity. You? Oh, I, 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 feel, I feel like an imposter syndrome. It's an imposter syndrome, thinking, oh my God, you know, oh. like it's... Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> no, it hasn't sunk in yet. I think it won't sunk. I, I think it won't sink in until you get. I uh, get to sit in Parliament House yeah. on the 26th of July. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just one group photo. I would like to take this opportunity as well for those of you in this room who live in our Fowler electorate, um, who actually supported me at the last federal election. We created history here. Just a big thank you um, to Di. Just, you know, you've started this incredible community and also a pioneering the way, like, for us immigrant kids growing up in this area to see a representative of parli uh, parliament who's so accessible and like us is so inspiring. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dai Li was a Vietnamese child refugee who grew up to become an ABC journalist. Being of Vietnamese background, I have a special relationship with the local community comprising over 100 nationalities. And then a local councillor. She's a survivor. She has already beaten breast cancer and was suspended from the Liberal Party for 10 years after running for Sydney's Fairfield Council as an independent against an endorsed Liberal candidate. The senior executives level uh, are mainly dominated by uh, Anglo-Celtic um, males. And to me, they sound the same, they think the same, they vote the same. Dai Li is acutely aware that key to her success is the fact that she belongs to and fights for her community. More than a quarter of people in Fowler are of Vietnamese or Chinese descent.
Unlike some of the Teals, who are new to this game, Dai Lee is no political ingenue. I might be new to the federal level of government and the federal politics, but, you know, local politics is brutal. Sometimes I, I finally jokingly will say, uh, you know, how many knives do you want to see behind me? You know, I'm, I'm, my back is actually quite scarred with plenty of knives and, and it's... Um, but, you know, you, you build a thicker skin, you build a thicker shield to really handle um, the political, uh, you know, navigate through the political labyrinth. <laughs> She's been in local politics long enough to know there's power in numbers. Hi. How are you? <laughs> oh my God, Kate! It's so lovely to meet you. Same here. It's so lovely to meet you too. Today, WA independent Kate Cheney is visiting her in Cabramatta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have you been involved in politics? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, since January. Oh really? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh. So I'm on a steep learning curve. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hello. 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 It doesn't matter what whoever is in government of the major parties, they're going to try and stifle debate, no matter what. So no matter, even though Labor said they're going to try and make it really conciliatory and manageable and fair, at the end of the day, they would want to maintain a two-party system. Mm. It'll be really interesting. I think with the, with this expanded cross bench, yeah. um, it's going to take us a while to work out how that works. And, yes, exactly. Um, so. And how we can have the impact that we want to have for our communities. That's right, exactly. Um, so, and, and I don't think anyone knows the answers to that. But no, but, not especially the new ones. No, <laughs> that's right, exactly. <laughs> Kate Cheney won the formerly safe Liberal seat of Curtin in Perth, once held by former Foreign Minister Julie Bishop. But for now, she's crisscrossing new independent electorates in the eastern states. In the small hours of a Melbourne morning, Cheney visits Monique Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> While a record number of independents were elected to the 47th Parliament, they narrowly missed out on holding the balance of power. I certainly am copying it from people in my electorate who said, and now you're powerless. You know. <laughs> No. You, you didn't. You didn't hold the balance of power, oh, so I therefore see, yes. you can't do anything. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yep, that yep, that, yep. See, that um, attitude of um, helplessness is what perpetuates the, the problems that we have. Do you think there's an element of learned helplessness that people, yeah. you know, well, what can you do? Well, all you can do is nudge. Right. You can only nudge things in the right direction, and it takes a lot of nudges to actually make any change. But, yeah, um, but it can't be that the only time you can affect change in Australia is when a small number of people have the balance of power in the house. No, perhaps. exactly. It's Parliamentary Orientation Day for the new MPs, and over the weekend, all hell has broken loose. The early goodwill between the new government and the supersized crossbench is at risk after the Prime Minister slashed parliamentary staffing allocations from four down to one. While some of the teals are blindsided by the PM's move, Dai Lee is a bit more practised in the art of political machinations. 
I think it's disappointing, or maybe I'm not surprised, that Labor will play the same game continuously. There's not, there's not going to be a change in Parliament, as long as those major parties will be there. So you're suspicious about their motives? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's any, there's genuineness in what they're doing. If they were genuine, and I was really honestly hoping that there was going to... I'm like, oh, my God, there's going to be some change in the way that Parliament will operate from now on. Because that's what Labor, you know, professed that they will do when they promised it. Yeah. So, and the first thing, I'm thinking... <laughs> Despite the news, the independents are putting on a brave face as they pose for a photo shoot outside Parliament House ahead of their big day training to be MPs. Speak down the lens here, Tim. We're just chatting casually. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just come down this way, guys. Stop for any media, or you want to go to your room? Oh, well, I'll stop you. Fine. Yeah. Hi. Hello. How's it going? It's super exciting. I think it's amazing to see so many new people in um, the house at one point in time, and so many women. Yeah. Which is fantastic. He's friendly. While the day was supposed to be a happy one for the new MPs, the news of the staffing cut is looming large. After an arduous day of training, the MPs are given the keys to their new parliamentary offices. Hi. Hello. Hello. Long, long day. Uh, okay. I think it's a strategic game that they played. Um, I can see that. For me, it's a, it's a game that they've played. And, and, you know, it's too early for me to play any games. I'll just observe it and I'll just take whatever that's on offer at this stage. Mm. One of the other MPs said to me off camera, it's a bit of an F you. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think in, initially quite a few of my um, colleagues out at, at, in Fowler were saying, oh, my God, that's sticking the fingers up at you guys, saying, you know, there you go. They've already lost one safe Labor seat. They're probably thinking, goodness me, if we give them more resources, they're going to build up an army, and how are we going to deal with that? And so probably that's a reason why they kind of said, oh, let's strip them, you know, let's tie their hands and let's, uh, you know, stop them from working, so. Let's weaken them. Yeah, let's uh, take away their ability to build a momentum and to build uh, a new force in Parliament. A couple of floors up from Di Lee's office, we meet Monique Ryan. Seems quite cavernous for... It is a bit empty at this point. And, and quite cavernous for just one MP and one staffer. Yes, that's true. Mm. So it, it, it's hard to imagine how we're going to do everything in this office with one staffer. Monique Ryan has been vocal about her opposition to the Prime Minister's staffing cuts on social media and has been copying criticism. She's lost some of the zing of our earlier meetings. You know, well, you're always going to come down to, gr to gr the ground at some point and having, start having to deal with the realities of a new workplace and that's going to have its challenges. You know, today's been a long day. That whole thing with Albanese, it was certainly him kind of enforcing his <laughs> prime ministerial <laughs> it was a, muscle. An, a, Is that a, enough? An, Probably enough, yeah. Huge, yeah. Got huge two, bastardry. Two an act of yeah. huge bastardry. Well... Oh. It was just so frustrating because I had been trying to get hold of him. Well, as I did one. I mean, some of the others did with more luck. But, uh, yeah, it was frustrating. We had heard that... I mean, it, we'd heard... Because we asked... You know we asked for five. Mm. And we'd oh, heard, thing, we'd heard that he said they'd be lucky to get two. Um, I, th I think that there are some political... Um, 
undertones to what this are decision. The well, I don't think the, the government wants the Teals to... They might, Mr Albanese might want us to succeed, but he might want us to limit the extent to which we succeed. Yeah, you know, I don't think he wants us to be a raging success because then perhaps, you know, he'll, he'll th people in other electorates might see that Teals or independents, community independents, whatever you want to call us, uh, call us, people might think that community independents are the way to go in other seats as well. So going back to Friday when you got that letter and when you discovered that this had happened, yes. what was your visceral response? Oh, I'd feel like I'd been, you know, punched in the chest. I was devastated. But, you know, I guess if nothing else, this decision has put paid to the, me being the Manchurian candidate Labor stooge because clearly, you know, the Labor Party is not cooperating with the independents and the small parties and the collaborating with us to, to the extent that we would have hoped. The loving is over. Didn't last very long. Hasn't really started, <laughs> given that we haven't actually sat in Parliament for a day. In Burnie, Tasmania, one of Australia's newest crossbench senators, Tammy Tyrrell, and her mentor, Jackie Lambie, are ready for the fight. They're part of a small group of people who will hold the balance of power in the Senate. Hope you weren't expecting a clean cup. Oh, lovely. Clean cup is over. Beautiful. What is that for? Oh, there's an incoming government brief here. That's nice. About what? I don't know. Oh, OK, so here's a brief from the tax people. It's 89 pages. And I've got one advice up. So I'm going to sit here and go through 90 pages of tax that I have no idea about. And we're supposed to go through this and, and uh, work all this out. It's just fabulous. Can you get back to Jennifer Westercott for me and tell her that because of staffing levels now, she'll be the same as the unions. Uh, I don't have time to see them. Tyrrell worked on Lambie's staff for seven years before deciding to run for the Senate. Yeah, look, I, I think they're ripping the heart and soul out of what people elected us to do. I have been a staffer and I know how tough it can be. Um, when I started with Jackie, there was two advisers. And trust me, we were working our butts off. There was not a lot of um, downtime, weekends after hours. This government came to power promising a different type of politics, more collaborative, kinder. Given what Prime Minister Albanese has done to the crossbench in regards to staffing, mm. what does it make you think about that statement? Yeah, not cool. We were actually chasing for three or four days prior to that letter coming trying to find out what he was doing with staffing and it was making us very nervous, actually probably even more than three or four days, maybe a week and a half, two weeks prior, because we felt that there was something in the wind but we were hoping that he wasn't going to do it, um, which was shit, excuse my technical term. I found it quite disgusting. But it's just this, you know, we want to open up, we want to talk to all you guys, do all this sort of stuff, and, 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 and it looks to me like, OK, this is, we're going back into a dictatorship, so mm. it doesn't matter whether it's the blue team or the red team, it looks like they're both going to do the same thing. I'd say this to the red team, though. The Liberals have been absolutely decimated. I wouldn't be doing what they did in the last nine years for the next three years because you'll find yourselves in exactly the same position because that's what's going to happen. Mm. If they're going to start doing what the Liberals did in the last nine years... Not going to work. And you'll only take, they'll only take themselves out of the game. So you go ahead, be my guest. Lambie's office was informed of the decision the day of her father's funeral. So for me, I've actually taken a little bit more personal. I'm really annoyed. I'm really annoyed that... How about you give me some warning, mate? You do the right thing, because I thought we were playing a trust game here, and I've known them. I've been up there now for nine years. Give or take. And you can't come and talk to me about what you're about to do. Um, you know, which is which has basically put my office into chaos with what you're doing. You just think you've got the right as a dictator to come in and do that. I just thought, there's the trust. So all that trust that we've built with the Labor Party, in one flick, that just went out the door. That's where we're back to ground zero with the Labor Party right now. 
While the new Labor government has the numbers in the lower house, it does not enjoy that luxury in the Senate. So these two women have the capacity to cause serious headaches for the Prime Minister and his cabinet. I'm not even worried about the tools they can look after themselves. They're not in the balance of power. But when that one vote, and I have to go through every piece of legislation, and I have to um, see all those stakeholders out there so I make the right decisions on behalf of the country, um, then to me, um, that it's just really worrying where we're heading to. I'd like to have more open communication about it, and there hasn't been open communication. Um, I'm willing to step up and be forceful and stand up for the people that work for us currently and the staff that I'd like to have working for me into the future. I will use my vote as a lever for the Tasmanian public at the end of the day because the majority of what they want is what I'm here to represent. It's a big change for Tyrrell, who was packing up her home in Ulverston to live between Launceston and Canberra. Has it sunk in that you're going to have this new life? Yeah. Oh, it has in the last couple of days um, because it's like I'm, I'm getting phone calls from Senate services saying, Senator Tyrrell, I'm like, stop it. No. No, my name's Tammy. I'm not allowed to call you that, Senator. I'm like, well, what they don't know won't hurt them. It's like, no, can't do it. Most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about politics. Most people are busy raising kids, paying the mortgage, driving home from work, tired, hoping you don't back into a car. Tyrrell's everyday appeal is what helped her oust Liberal stalwart Senator Erica Betts from politics after a 28-year career. Tim and I, we've worked all our lives. He works night shift in aged care. I've worked in paddocks, factories, offices. Tyrrell also spent a lot of her career before politics working for employment services, helping people find jobs and accommodation. Like, if you start out as a checkout chick at Woolworths, doesn't mean that's where you're going to stay. Um, doesn't mean that if you're in an onion paddock or a carrot paddock, you're not going to become a senator for Tasmania one day, because that's where I started, hoeing, hoeing weeds in paddocks. In a back corner of Parliament House, Dai Lee is setting up her office for her first ever sitting week. In the moment, we'll pin it up here, but yeah. maybe get it framed. <laughs> She's about to join a meeting between the Independents and Anthony Albanese. They're still hoping they can change the Prime Minister's mind on staffing cuts. If you were a betting woman, how do you think that meeting's going to go today? How do you think the Prime Minister's going to respond? Well, I hope, I hope that he would see the fairness um, of how he approached the crossbenches. I think he has to be fair. The independents emerge from the meeting about midday. Hello. Hello. How did it go? Interesting. Very interesting. In what way? Oh, well, I've never been in a, in a meeting with the Prime Minister before. And it was great on it. What an exciting moment. We haven't come to it. There's no sort of, there's no uh, discreet or um, outcome from today's meeting, but we'll, there's a few things for people to think about and hopefully, we'll, hopefully there'll be progress. I think we're, we're sort of negotiating really. And that's, you know, I think I have a lot to learn. I'm a, just a, a, a rookie and I think the other um, new parliamentarians also have a lot to learn as well. I, I think I've could have handled the situation around the staffing in the first instance better. Um, 
And why is that? Oh, because I think I didn't, as a, as a new person, I actually didn't have the confidence to pick up the phone and call the people that I probably should have spoken to. Uh, and uh, it would have been better to do that in a personal way rather than perhaps talking to the media about it <laughs> or, or possibly commenting. Be wrong about <laughs> possibly that. what could be wrong with talking to the media or, or commenting on it on the social media. I think that was an error, actually. And I'll learn from that. Won't do that again. You're not here for that long, none of us will be. And when you're sitting on the porch, thinking about what you did, you can either have a source of pride or a source of regret. Make it a source of pride. The big day arrives. All the members of the 47th Parliament come together for the first time. For the families of these women, emotions are on show. Ngày hôm nay thì rất là cảm động vì Khánh Linh cũng thấy là chị Đài mặc áo dài Việt Nam. <cười> không biết là cô có có phải là cô đã có là có gợi ý không? Có có phải đúng như vậy. <cười> Tại vì cô luôn luôn nhắc nhở cháu là phải nhớ tới mình là người Việt Nam đó. Dạ. Fala, Dai Trang Lee, Ku Yong, Monique Marie Ryan, Wentworth, Allegra May Spender, Goldstein. Zoe Daniel. These parliamentarians will need to continue to reassure their communities they're on their side. Coming from a community with people who've got backgrounds like mine, how much they have struggled and how much they have been forgotten uh, by successive governments and and I think um, you know the election my election was for them expressing that it's time for them to shine. Senator Tyrrell. Hi, this is not my first speech. I'll need a teensy bit more than just a couple of minutes for that. But I no. couldn't pass up a chance to stand up here and say a big thank you to all the people who worked so hard to get me into this place. I never thought in a million years that I would be a senator. I'm not a politician. We're breaking into this place because of the work you're doing. And this is just the start. They'll have to shrug off the slings and arrows of political discourse. In the Good Weekend uh, article, there was a reference to uh, the fact that I've been called Bambi on occasion and that I uh, am, am pretty adamant that I am no Bambi. But my favourite comment from the social media over the weekend was that I, uh, I'm not Bambi, I'm Dumbo which I thought was quite funny, actually. But I also, as I recall, uh, Dumbo has very nice eyes. And uh, at the end, he prevails. Flaps his ears and flies away, and I'll take that. Do you have any sense of what on earth this <gasps> lovely person was getting oh, at? I don't know what they meant. I, I think they were saying that I'm dumb. Oh, yeah, whatever. None of us are perfect. Dumbo was a very magical elephant, though. Dumbo, Dumbo rocked. Mm. The pressure's also on these new MPs to make an impact with their first speech to Parliament. Is it emotional? Yes, very. But I'm trying not to. I'm trying to hold that in. <laughs> because it is incredible. I can't believe I'm here. It's a great honour. 
But I'm not going to cry. You're not going to make me cry. <laughs> you can try as hard as you might. Not yet, anyway. It's going to be good? Yeah, it's going to be good. I give the call to the Honourable Member for Kuyong. I am the first woman and the first independent to represent this electorate. I will not be the last. But the love in the House is short-lived. During her first ever question to the government, it's clear from the opposition jeers that the Liberal Party won't soon let this woman forget that she took out one of their brightest political stars. COVID-19 infections in this country are at a record high and increasing. Can the Minister please explain how he proposes to manage the oncoming national significant burden of disability and chronic illness? Put your masks on from repeated infection order from, from repeated members... infection with covid-19 put your masks on went viral within hours it was a compelling first glimpse at how this new breed of politicians might wield their power So thank you once again for your amazing support and I'm excited to be your federal member um, of parliament. And call me Di. <laughs> Some friendly advice is try as hard as you can. So do your best and always try, try from Enormous Typer. And I think that's excellent advice. So Enormous Typer, I'm gonna try, try, try. Really excited to be here. Uh, feeling incredibly lucky to have this opportunity and uh, it all begins. Mm -hmm.